Now we'd like to start a talk session, animation that grows up with you, a girl's anime franchise turned 20. I'm Ryota Fujitsu, I'm anime critique and serving as moderator of the talk and writing about the article of animation. This event is one of the collaborative projects of the Japan Media Art Festival Oversea Promotion of Agency for Cultural Affairs, Government of Japan, and Anasi International Animation Film Festival 2021, delivered in Japanese as well as in English. Theme of this collaborative project is expanded animation under the theme multiple events are planned, and this talk event is actually one of them. About other events in this project, please find it out in homepage. We invited an animation director, Junichi Sato, as a guest of today's talk. Mr. Sato directed in 2021 uh, Whisker Away and Looking for Majika Doremi in 2021 um, animated features. This Whisker Away actually awarded Animation Division Excellent Award at the 24th Japan Media Art Festival. So today we'd like to talk about his work under this theme. So, Director Sato, nice to meet you. Yes, hello, my name is Junichi Sato. I'm the Director of Animation. Pleased to meet you. So today, we'd like to talk about your two animated feature film, and originally looking for Machiko Doremi. Um, well, in fact, that was created for commemorating 20th anniversary of Ujamajo Doremi. So let me start asking um, the question about the time 20 years ago, how did that work start it, or how did you create it? Well, the time slot Ojamajo Doremi was shown to TV and actually originally targeting small girls. It was sponsored by um, toy companies. This time slot was somehow covered by a series of works or animations, but this year um, we had a chance to show original products this year. So, um, so that was the year actually Toy Animation had a chance to plan and create original animation story for girls. So this is how it started. Then naturally we came up with the idea that story of magical girls is the, what we should create. Okay, so how did you shoot the age of the target girls at the time? Well, conventionally, this is a time frame set for the girls age group 3 to 5 years old, maybe up to 6 or 7 years old. So it means that they are preschool children, right? Yes. Um, perhaps the largest group of children are three to four years old. So then towards those age group girls, Oshamatsu Doremi, in fact, had a, a lot of fun element as well as um, the some element which can be sympathy, get the sympathy for those bit older children, like the relationship with parents or friends or something very close matters to them. So, how did you decide or choose which element to be included in the stories and how did you coordinate it? Well, of course, um, we can target the three to five years old as a specific target, but um, as creator, we hope to make this animation to be enjoyed by the older little girls, like up to 10 years old. So main target is, as I said, preschool children, but um, as a creator, we hope that older children can also enjoy it. So it means that uh, you are saying that there is a target age group as a core in terms of the business associated with the toys, but there is another potential age group whose ages are a little higher, so they are double structure as a target. Yes, um, the, I think the contents for those three to five years old are for those higher age girls are not mutually exclusive. That is what we are 
aware of. One day those may target three to five years old children grow up and go to school. Anything they will encounter naturally in the school, such as sense of closeness or friendship, can be presented in animation. That's what we thought. So, what about response? Um, with regards to the production for children, it is difficult to get clear response because children do not have media to respond. So, how did you find it? Well, to that point, um, well, the only way we feel that response is looking at numbers, sales, and viewing rate. How much, in fact, the children enjoy the program is maybe found how I observe my own children, whether they enjoy it or not. So having said that, fortunately, the numbers were quite good, so we could move forward with a good confidence. Well, in the setting of the story, for example, single parent child or the returnee children, or sometimes, well, the jobs of the parents that children cannot be proud of, such sufferings or the problems are portrayed quite a lot. So, did you intend to make a clear distinction from conventional story of the magical girls with this one? Well, um, I don't think so. It was not something we tried to do regardless. However, um, as we talk with Seki-san, a producer, and Yamada-san, which is Takashi Yamada-san, in charge of structure of the series, we agreed that we should not avoid such matters or sufferings of the children. So when we had a briefing, actually we collected information of our own experience experiences in childhood, or the children who cut our attention, and also the producer did research to find out realities surrounding the children today. I see. And then you mentioned that number followed, so then loved by the fans and was celebrating 20th anniversary, and you decided to make a film accordingly. So having said that, when you came up with the idea of creating a new animation to celebrate the 20th anniversary, uh, is there any specific discussion or talk, or did you have a clear idea? Well, the plan itself, creating the 20th anniversary, started with a kind of vague idea. I would say it's nice to have kind of idea. So it was not clear at all at the beginning about the direction to create what kind of film. But um, it was clear that film would be created for those children who watched Doremi 20 years ago, but we wondered whether they would like to see grown-up Doremi today, how much they wish to see whether the same Doremi as 20 years ago, or would they want to see grown-up Doremi along with them? After all, we decide to make uh, Looking for Machika Doremi with heroines who were actually watching Doremi 20 years ago. What we found is that, well, there were Doremi-related events taking place many places in different parts of Japan. The events were full with audience who were the watchers of Doremi 20 years ago looked so joyful. They were enjoying so much shows and song by voice actors. Then, looking at them, I thought, well, the girls who had enjoyed Doremi in the past were still there. Remaining in their heart with their awareness, we decided to create the film that encouraged them, so they are not so much changed from that time, so we'd like to make the film to create, well, create the film to encourage them, in fact. So then, Sora, Mile, Leika, these three characters, uh, they are around the age, probably just before reaching the adults, or some are already very active in society. So these three main characters were born. So, how did you decide these characters? What sort of discussion did you have, Yamada-san and Seki-san? I did not remember whether we discussed seriously anything so specific about these characters. 
Uh, rather, naturally we thought about generation of the audience of Doremi, thinking about the oldest children who watched Doremi and the youngest children in three to five years old, and the broadcast duration or the period was five years. Uh, there are about five years difference in age among audience, therefore. So we assume that the wide range difference can be presented among the characters. I see. And as I had interviewed with you. Um, you have just told, you collected reality of the children today as well as your own experience in childhood. And that is what you did in the process of fleshing the characters, how they think, how they feel. So at that time, did you also get some input from women working or living around you? Yes, we did. And in fact, we talked with women staff working in the Toei animation for preparing those characters. And, well, was that useful to collect information? I mean, increase the specific details of each characters, make them more lively? Yes, I think so, because three characters in the film are created based on our images, well, our image of 20s in our perspective, but we are actually very far away from 20s, and we are not female. So, well, there would be inevitably a gap with reality. So, in order to have empathy from the audience and touch their hearts, we need to something to complement to fill in that gap. Well, so maybe it's nothing special, but um, when the creators are adults and then they create something for the small children or school children, there is a gap. And in case of you, Sato-san, you are adult grown-up male, and creating an elementary school girl Doremi character, there's a gap, if I can say so. How did you... Well, how do you fill that gap? Well, uh, just with my imagination, I would just say, well, only. But um, we actually think about this way. So when I ask about a girl, in a kindergarten, who do you like? And her answer today is, well, different from yesterday. Yesterday, she said boy A, today boy B. Reasons are also different every day because he let her use the crayon or because he helped her when she fell. Her thought changes every day, but in short, she likes someone who is kind to her. So in essence, I pick up the essence, um, liking someone kind to her from her behavior, and I use it for the, creating the character and filling the gap. Understood. So hearing from the women's staff members in Toei Animation, um, it is for finding out something hidden but common large themes of, or features rather than collecting individual episodes. Yes, I think so. Um, there are some women-specific difficulties in working in society. I know that as knowledge, but I cannot feel it by myself. And also, how people face the facts or difficulties varies. Some may simply endure until they're passing away, or some may wish to punch back. So... When you present the ideas in a film, what makes me feel looking for Machika Doremi really one of these series of Doremi is that you use Doremi-like expression methods such as making a broad smile. And, well, this is just my impression, but would that be a strategic choice? Or Yes. So, when I was creating original Doremi series for little children, the topics 
and the stories were sometimes very serious. But children watch the program every week, not because the series are beautiful or good stories. Um, if that is the case, it is rather rare. I would say children are motivated to watch because stories are exciting and fun and they love to see goofing up Doremi. But what would remain at the end is Doremi's kindness or sincerity. So we try to make sure that no matter how serious the story would be, certainly at the end everyone smile. That was the Doremi taste, I think. So when we create a new film, we make sure that that nature or the taste maintained. Well, director Sato, when you create or the direct a film, well, I think you said balance between the sort of gag and story or seriousness actually set the tone. Regarding the new film, looking for Machika Doremi, what was the proportional ratio of that? Well, uh, at the beginning, I was wondering what is the right ratio because it was a film and target audience are no longer children. So, in a sense, it should be realistic, maybe, so the gag part should be stay small. However, uh, Takuya Igarashi, uh, who actually completed the first storyboard of the film, and also leading the original Doremi series or the program, from the beginning, and when he actually completed the storyboard, he actually incorporated a lot of Doremi taste, and I found it very true to Doremi, and then I was assured by looking at storyboard. So in terms of balance between gag and serious elements, I don't think there are much difference with the original Doremi stories on TV. But did you actually wonder what is the appropriate tone? Yes. Um, I thought the audience, as a grown-up woman, will sympathize directly or deeply with the story itself. Therefore, they would not be comfortable to see somehow making light of issues. Um, although it's just in a story of the animation. On the other hand, it is true that audience found Doremi likable or felt sympathy when she is shouting with gag face or she is saying something serious. Um, sorry, not something serious, I would say. So this time we decided to what we believe right. It sounds like your viewpoint is very close to the audience viewpoint. And, and I found it quite interesting to find that some of the scenes actually include the drinking scene, and it seems to be a sort of adult taste. I found them as um, kind of natural outcome with output based on the scenario. Well, um, yeah, I have to say that the producer and the, the members actually including scenario writer, love drinking, maybe that's why. But it is true, it can be more seen of sweet eating or at cafe, I understand. But um, setting a scene in such a fun sort of environment give us a sort of, um, well, leading us to the Doremi's world, I think so. So, when I watch uh, Looking for Machiko Doremi, I found this is a story of distance between fiction and audience, or reality. Mm, there's, I would say, there's no such thing in our world, magic, but instead, there's a fiction. Maybe I can say so. So, how do you think about treat magic in the looking for Machika Doremi. Um, well, I would say from the beginning, we are sure that magic would not resolve any issues in this story. Audience no longer believe in magic. But when I was looking sparkling eyes of those audience or the participants of the event, as I said, 
I felt that they are not denying themselves in childhood, playing and believing in magic. It is somehow quite natural to deny how they were in a childhood as foolish or ignorant enough to believe in magic or something like that. But they were not like that. They were enjoying the Doremi stage quite a lot. So... I believe that um, they cherish themselves believing magic in childhood, and if they can look back on childhood and find it themselves adorable, then that would be the magic I can represent in this film. So then, thinking about the transformation from child to adult, it is not the complete transformation from something called child to something called adult, right? Right. Well, if I think about myself, there are several animation I loved and often watched, and I almost have no memory about them, but the friendship or the justice are actually remain inside of me as an experience through the animation, even though I don't have clear memory of the childhood. It's almost like this physical sort of experience remaining me, what is astonishing, cool, or stunning impression stayed with me. So if that is the magic, let's say, then um, that is something I'd like to affirm. Okay. So, you yourself in childhood remains somehow even now after growing up. Yes, I think so. Well, not only girls, but also boys. For example, we boys loved hero story and a lot of us watching the program. And as grown up, we no longer believe that the justice always wins, but we don't deny when the hero wins against enemies in a story. Well, you have just mentioned that boys love story of heroes, but when I look at your filmography, there are story for girls, there are many, um, well, certainly constituting one of the main pillars of your works. So, do you have anything particular in mind when you're creating the story for the girls? Well, reason why I created a lot of story of girls is that that my career somehow started with um, the girls' stories, especially not my sort of original intention. But having said that, I always consider whether or how my work looked by the children. Um, so I don't think uh, anything particular because the works are for sto uh, story of girls. So, well, the difference is that, well, maybe there are lots of motifs liked by the girls in girls' story, likewise boys' stories. Yes, I think so. That may be the only difference, because um, for boys, I would say, the distraction or somehow scattering something away is a kind of action boys love and very straight forward to the boy's desire and showing the same scene to the girls, it may not be so impressive to her or to them. Rather, at the end of the story, smiling each other and shaking hands, these are the things and elements girls loves. So, I actually pay attention in that respect, whether I'm creating the story for boys or girls, but at the end, I always consider what would be delighted or enjoyed by the children. In that sense, there's no difference. So, 
uh, director Sato. Uh, you created Ojamajo Doremi in 1999. And then after many years, in 2018, you actually directed Hag to Pretty Cure. That is a kind of long series of stories, but this is very traditional in a way, the classic girl story. Then, of course, planning is different, but targeting similar age group, but time settings are different. So, do you think anything changed in the concept of your mind between these two works? Well, I was not involved from the beginning uh, for production of the Hagu Pretty Cure. So I wanted to know what girls are enjoying while they are watching the Precure. So I did the survey showing the uh, Precure to children and observed what they are responding. Um, in fact, the basic storyline of Precure is that she fight against enemies and defeat them and resolve issues. But when I observed children watching Precure, um, fighting scenes did not win their heart so much. Rather, they were vividly responding to sparkling scenes like beautiful transformation of Precure, for example. So this is how I found my direction for Precure, I would say. Well, Hagut Pretty Cure is remarked by society with a message of highlighting contemporaneous or the diversity or encouragement to the audience, especially for girls. Does it mean that these elements have become part of the core of the production in order to reflect change of the time? How can I explain? Well, I did not think I had to reflect change of the era in such manner. In this series, Humi Tsubota was in charge of the series structure, and in our work, these messages were naturally emerged. So we did not intentionally put diversity in front of this story. Rather, we wrote it as a, well, yeah, we wrote the story as an element that children naturally encounter as they grow up in a society. I understand. So I can say it is very similar to what you just said in Doremi earlier. You said that the writing about something um, preschool children will encounter in the future. Yes, uh, it is correct. Fundamentally, that was what we have been doing. In Precure, actually, I made a challenge. Uh, there was a story about a boy who got injured and became unable to skate anymore. Um, he actually originally, uh, Ms. Tsubota wrote about is that, um, that he got injured because of his fault, but I asked her to rewrite the story in which boy was suddenly hit by a car and became unable to skate without his fault. So my intention was the children watching Pretty Cure have not experienced the Great Earth Grace, but we all know one day all of a sudden the disaster happens, it takes everything from us, we know this uh, from experience. But the Pretty Cure audience kids don't have such experience around them. Over time as they grow older, they may run into people who have such experiences one day. So it may be just a small episode, but this fact of life I wanted to touch upon um, it may become meaningful for my audiences someday. I'm not sure how effective it would be about the approach is the same. So as a creator, you wanted to include it in your work or your message to your audience? That's right. So it sounds like the children's anime should include something like, well, of course, entertainment is important, but also something like a sneak preview 
or vaccination prior to the real life experiences they may have later in their lives? What do you think? Important for children's films? Yes, for me, I think it's important. So you can forget the episode or even the whole title, but the remnant of your experience in the story stays with you. So, so as a creator, we should not fall for the opportunistic solutions or expedient endings. So when it comes to the ending of looking for magical Doremi, how to put the story to an end, I guess it was a tough decision. So what was the thought process of you and your team about the desired last scene? During the scenario writing, the episode was supposed to end up like a girl called Reika has a proper farewell with her father. So she goes to her deceased father to find her father never forgot her. She rest assured and moved ahead. So when I read the scenario, I was so moved that I cried. Fabulous. Let's go for it, we said. But during the process of storyboarding, however, I was depicting Reika. She's actually an abandoned kid. No. So one day, her father left the house never to come back, and Reika could not believe in the loves of the fathers in the course of her life. But she was always drawing pictures, her father told her. As I continued depicting Reika, I realized, so if the story goes like that, Reika will never become truly independent from her father. So I realized that while storyboarding. So she found the love of her father, and that way she could finally move ahead. So is it really okay as a story of her growth? So Reika's father in the film instead rejected Reika, like, saying, have we met before, like a total stranger? So she can't look up and move ahead if, she can't, uh, if she's rejected? No. So she can still go on. So that makes Reika a truly self-standing person. So during the storyboarding, I consulted your mother son. I said I want to delete the parting scene between Reika and father. That's better for Reika's true independence. The films made like that than I was beginning to see. Uh, meeting your own self in the childhood. So you as a kid, believing in magic and playing, so you give yourself your own approval once again. I thought it was the proper ending, and that's how the film should end up. So as the scenario stage, you thought it's your goal, but during the storyboarding, etc., you have new findings along the way, and that makes you, redis makes you rediscover the theme of your movie. That's right. The characters are organic, and you walk side by side with them. So during this process, well, how can I say? During the scenario writing, as well as the storyboarding, the characters suddenly start moving on their own. In the film, Sora said that out of the blue, it doesn't matter if Doremi can use magic or not, she always had her magic in herself. That's not a part of this original scenario, not even during the storyboarding until the very last minute. But to me, Sora suddenly went like, wow, you know what? And said like that to me. So if you look at anatomy into the scenario, this Sora's statement is abrupt or groundless. But when depicting her, it was a very natural development to me. Right. So the movie said the goal on its own, yes. So this kind of feeling I actually had during the making of the original Doremi sequels. Doremi spontaneously did this, did that for her friends, all independent from me.
So I thought it's the familiar feeling while storyboarding. Then in 2020, you released another feature length film, A Whisker Way. It's about a girl slightly older in early adolescence. So the viewers are of the same generation or higher. So for making films like that, to take a different approach from kids' show, yes. The target was not preschoolers, but older in a broader age band, according to the project plan. So, what is important for such cases? Characters, feelings, situations, etc., become more important? Well, basically, yes. In a whisker away, the protagonist is a girl called Muge, so facing whisker sincerely is the key. However, uh, just like in the previous example, you and Muge as a person are different in many ways. So how do you fill up the gaps? Not through a fact-finding research or anything? That's right. For this, I should mention about the screenwriter, Ms. Mario Kada. The character born from Mario Kada existed in the first place, so you face with her persona, personality, etc. sincerely. And Mario Kada must have projected a lot of herself onto the character. So during the sto storyboarding, what Okada-san would respond in the situation, or what kind of kid was she in her junior high? I used to think a lot. Yes. So, I think I asked this when I interviewed you before. So about your work, Junkers come here in 1995. It's also about a girl in early adolescence with parents in a precarious relationship. She experienced her first love and peeked into the adult's affairs. So unexpectedly, lots of similarity with a whisker away. A cat in this one and a dog in the other one, but anyway, Animals worked as a transitional object in the children's literature to support unstable children. A lot in common, I think. So speaking of adolescence, how do you treat it in your thought process when you create characters of such ages? Well, one thing for sure is we should not be overconfident when we try to understand them. So you feel you know them enough, then, but the character's image tends to be deceiving. So you should start as if you have almost no ideas. This applies to either work, also Doremi and others, especially when I depict female characters. In other words, you must trust your scripts? Yes. Screenplays, perhaps a portraying characters in their adolescence, they apparently have given a 100% understanding, especially in those I was involved. So you have illogical feelings or emotions, so you must acknowledge them. Otherwise, you can't be depict them. Right, so in your adolescence, you cannot explain your own feelings. If someone else comes in and logically breaks down to analyze them, they are no longer enigmatic, right? That's right. Getting angry with such a thing is impossible if someone says to you, but if you can't help it, you can't help it. That's the right way of directing it. So in that sense, in a whisker away, I was Muge 
and easy character to deal with it, even with little idea about her to start with, but did she behave for you as expected? Well, in the beginning, I actually struggled to understand her underlining problem. So if you have no clue at all, then you can't depict her either. So at school, she had a crush with um, her, well, a crush on her classmate Hinode-kun, but she deliberately do something to put him off for no logical reasons. And her mother left the house in her case, left her behind. So. She's missing the, um, the mother's love because she was abandoned. So she missed the uh, opportunity to be loved unconditionally. So she can't imagine herself loved by someone for no reason. So she told Hinode she loves him, but she was constantly afraid of being rejected like persistent trauma. So that's why she always tried to make her, make him hate her, telling she loves him, but also doing something to upset him. So she thinks that if she's rejected by Hinode, but it's because of her wrong behavior, not her personality. She just wanted such an insurance. So when I realized it, I finally became able to depict her. Right. So it means for us adults, doing something to bother him. It feels like too far-fetched or big jump, but you portray that she was driven by some unknown feelings, and that way you develop your female characters in their teens. Yes, as far as a Muge character is concerned. Yeah, that's the core approach. In that sense, Human being, well, it's the uh, two grand theme, but from young children to adolescent, then eventually those grown up adults, like in looking for magic or doremi, there are differences or things in common among them. When designing or directing those characters, how do you treat the degree of such aspects? Well, what can I say? It really depends from character to character, situation to situation. I'm not sure if this answers your questions, but uh, in a whisker away, it has a scene of Muge's mother and her father's girlfriend, Kaoru, fighting neck to neck. Muge, in the shape of a cat, was watching the whole commotion. Adults are desperately serious in wrestling against each other, but through the lens of Muge, it looked all comical. So, oh God, how nasty. Never want to be part of it. No way. That's the feeling as she watched it. So viewed from a different angle, even if the situation is the same, but it's portrayed in a completely opposite effect. So we align ourselves with Muga's feeling. That's why you see the scenes like that in the film. It's not about directing, it's rather a general question, but for you, what is the definition of the grown-ups or adults? Any line you draw between what's adults, what's not? You can't really categorize adults collectively like that. In the case of um, Whisker Away versus Junkers Come Here, I treat adults in different ways. When making Junkers, 
But then, the theme of adults pursuing the freedom in exchange for their lives as children, celebrating their freedom and their desired lifestyles, so encouraging divorces, or justifying them for the sake of freedom, and I watched a lot of TV dramas like that back then. And such dramas always had very mature, understanding children who said, Mom, it's your life, do what you want. I, I really felt uncomfortable with it. So not all kids are like that, I wanted to say. So that's the starting point. Then, however, in a whisker away, the child feature there is not that reliant on adults. So that was the depiction of the fighting between women, two women, and even her own father was the comical existence to the eye of Muge. So, depending on the angle of the character's view, adults look differently. Well, I personally want to portray adults as someone cool, but believe it or not, not all adults are cool. So cool, speaking of cool, what kind of adults are the cool adults you? For example, how can I say, being able to accept your imperfection, imperfect self, that's cool. As a little sidetracking, but I like both directors, Dezaki san and Takahata san. So, Isao Takahata and Osamu Dezaki, right? So, the, um, the adults featured in Dezaki san's film are always so cool, so cool and dignified. Takahata san portray adults in perfection as they are. I like them both. Right. So you mean the adults are made up of two contrasting natures. Which aspect you focus on, it depends. Right. In other words, children are bearing a certain image for you. As you said earlier, kids tend to be attracted by someone nice and caring. Do you think their life is somewhat simpler than adults? That's probably the image of children required in my creation. Just that, just that. So some kids are precocious with realist thinking, like such and such are all lies, etc. There are children like that out there, but my work is not the place to feature the children like that. For many years, you have been making children's animation, you briefly touched upon, but any particular thing you consider as important? In the making, it is important to adjust your eye level down to the children's eyes. Direct or straightforward message telling is not always the best. Let's say you play with a child, for example, such as chess or shogi. If you play seriously, all out, then you can easily beat him. If you say you do no faking, you're honest, that's the way it should be, you may be right, but that way the child may hate shogi. So the joy of shogi must be taught to children by an adult to start with. So then the art of losing gets involved. Right. It's very similar when making films for children. Adjusting your eye level down to the children's eyes is important in the making of kids' programs. So, having heard of what you said, it links back to the earlier subjects of how you define the adults. In a way, your work, Ojamajo Doremi, was, despite its complex and realistic themes, 
there was very good at adjusting the eye level. That's why even after 20 years, it was remembered by many people. How about that? It could be true. Not just about me, but also the screenwriter and the producer. The events and happenings in the story were originated from us adults, but we never processed them in an adult way. Adjusting our eye level down to the kids' eyes was something we always um, keep in mind. Another question I wanted to ask was, for looking for magical Doremi, you co-directed with Ms. Kamatani, and Whisker Away was written by Ms. Mari Okada. And moreover, uh, looking for magical Doremi, you had Ms. Seki as the producer. So you were many female colleagues you worked with. Did your experience with them broaden your perspective when depicting girls, or did they give you any insights? Yes, a lot. They know what we men don't know. For example, in looking for magical Doremi, my co-director Kamatani-san injected a lot of her own experience, the joyful feelings on the girls' getaway trip, for example, or the feelings like throwing the arrogant balls like judo or beating up the boyfriend, pestering for money, etc. So there are the callings or motivation of Kamatani-san. So that's the empathic sisterhood between her and her female audiences. I wouldn't deny it. Okay, got it. Well, um, it feels like too much sometimes to me as a man, but if she insists that in this way they feel more catharsis, I humbly accept her advice. So, in order to understand Muge, you should try to understand Okada-san then? Is this your approach? Yes, Okada-san's, well, excuse my choice of words, but uh, a lot of her warped teenagehood memories were projected onto her works. So my such self-contained assumption is the basis of my depiction. So having heard of different stories you told me, we talked mainly about children's anime today. So for children, you believe that um, children's anime has its own meaningful role, at least. Um, I have such an impression that you believe so when making films. So do you believe in something anime can do to help people? Well, I don't think there's not much anime can do for people. Some viewers of my animation says to me, well, it changed my view of life. Maybe it's true, but in most cases, I would say that something you already had yourself. So shedding the light onto such aspects, that's what animation can do at its best. I always, not to be patronizing, tearing this and that, pushing advice in a self-righteous way. And that kind of balance, I think it would work best. So I would say, you can forget about the title, but your favorite characters, tears, smiles, here, here and there, will be with you in the form of an experience. After you have grown up, someday you will find it helpful. I selfishly believe so. So, such a selfish belief of yours would be the foundation, big foundation of your creative activities. Exactly. I wanted to work for something to do with animation because 
It could help children to build a foundation of their core emotions, so the feelings and values you never let go of for the rest of their lives. So I felt interesting to me as a job. I still feel i n g the same even today. The talk session is finally coming close to the end. So, for those people who are watching now, we have any message for them, please? Okay. Children's animation is something hard to make.、Um, Business case for due to the declining birth rate and other various reasons. So, there are less and less films being made for children. Many of the animation films nowadays are targeting elder children. So, I don't want to speak ill about anything, but、uh, making anime of the children, for the children, the proper know how. Is becoming a declining art in the industry, I'm afraid. So, I'm not asking you as a fan to do something, but as a creator, or making films for children properly, such techniques must be preserved through conscious efforts. So, if you become aware of this, what's going on, and support those conscientious creators practicing that way. So, so for looking for Magical Doremi with Ms. Kamatani, or Whisker Away with Mr. Shibayama, so you teamed up with young directors for both works. So, was、um, knowledge transfer one of the reasons behind it? Yes. I undertook hack procure for the same reason. So, I wanted to hand over the proper technique of making children. Anime to my success. Thank you very much. So, let me conclude animation that grows up with you. A girl's anime franchise turns 20 with Junichi Sato, the director. So, thank you very much for watching. With expanded animation program, you can enjoy other talk events, so please check them out. For further details, access the website here. So, once again, thank you very much, Mr. Sato. Thank you.